and welcome back to Beyond the Scale True Healing. If you've been with us before, thanks for coming back. And if you're new to our channel, we're so thrilled to have you here with us. We're just three regular carnivore women sharing our journey and hoping to shed some light about the process from our perspectives, what's helped, the difficulties, and the day-to-day. -day. Our hope is to provide some non-judgmental, honest, and unbiased education regarding this way of life. Today, we have the absolute privilege to have with us the OG carnivore woman, Kelly Hogan. We feel so blessed and grateful to call her a friend and mentor. Her support, education, and tirelessness in helping us all through the day-to-day -day with love and kindness are unparalleled. You just cannot ask for a more down-to-earth, loving, kind, and compassionate person to have in your corner. And she's always in your corner. Kelly makes the world a better place each and every day, and we're so thankful that she's here to talk with us and to continue to educate and spread the word about this way of life, sugar, carb, food addiction, and all the things. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts, Kelly, for being here with us. It's so warm right now in my heart. <laughs> that was really sweet. I love you three. You're fantastic. I was really happy that you asked me to come talk to you. We, we are so excited to have you here. Um, we want to talk a little bit about some confusion and some trends. You know, we hear some say, keep it simple, just eat the meat, yeah. but that doesn't work for everybody. And then we find some people who will say, well, you need to eat less protein and really up the fat. Yeah. But sometimes that doesn't quite work either. And I think a lot of people, some of us, um, have a tendency to jump on every trend to try to yeah. duplicate the, the results that other people are seeing. Right. So my first question for you is, is there a right way or a wrong way to do carnivore in general for people? Oh, I almost wish, don't we wish there was, right? <laughs> Be like, yes. And this is what it is. I'm going to tell it to you now. Of course not. No. Um, so I think for about for about 10 years, my main goal, purpose, like the only thing I felt like I was really useful for was just showing that it can be so simple, almost to a point I made sure I just ate McDonald's burger patties <laughs> almost exclusively for 10 years, partly because it was cheap and easy for me as a mom. I was having babies at that point and had toddlers and they were all close together and it was just so simple. And I just found such a routine and a comfort in knowing that every single day I had the same thing. I know some people think, oh my gosh, it's like feeding a puppy. That sounds awful. <laughs> but I did not feel that way. I really enjoyed the simplicity of knowing what I was going to have. And I, I would typically tell people like six to eight, depending on how hungry I was. If I was ever starving, I could have more. But that was just like my sweet spot. And it was so simple. And I wanted to demonstrate how cheap and easy it could be you don't have to buy expensive meats you don't have to measure anything i did not know i'd never checked my ketones once i did go for yearly lab work but i had no idea other than once a year what my glucose was that was it and it worked so well for me and it really worked well it's not like no one else in 10 years ever said oh my gosh this works well for me too of course I had people saying, same here, sister. I'm not necessarily eating burger patties, but I just eat the meat that works for me in my life and I'm feeling better. And, and that's what I did for a really long time. And then I started working with individuals more than for just on a Facebook post. And when you really get to know people, and this is on a setting where I have Zoom calls with 30, usually 30 to 40 people, and a lot of times they would come back month after month. And if they started off, um, I started doing this, not this past June, but June before. And they say, I'm eating six to eight burger patties too. Great. The next month, I'm still doing it. Good. How's that going? Well, I'm sick of it. Oh, okay. So you hate your life now. That's not good. So we have to adjust. My plan clearly didn't work. Or they come back and say, it, it's going okay except I can't lose a single pound. You're like, really? That's so interesting. 
because I lost weight like crazy. So it turns out my way did not work for everybody. And it's one thing to just have casual interactions on Instagram or Facebook. But when you're looking at the same people week after week after week for months, and they're saying, your way isn't doing the same thing for me that it did for you. What kind of monster would I be to be like, well, I'm sorry, this is just how we roll around here. We're going to keep, we're just going to keep it simple because that's how we do it. That's nuts. So yes, I started trying some things that were a little more complicated. Um, let's see, 2000, summer of 2021. So a little more than a year ago, I started trying some leaner days of carnivore. I would do a couple days of leaner days and then super high fat. A couple days of lean, high fat. And I was like, okay, maybe this because I feel great. I even lost a few pounds and some other people tried it. One of my good buddies, Karen, she tried it. She lost several pounds at first. Like, All right, this is good. Quite a few women tried it because they had already tried simple. That's what I think is so important to emphasize. If somebody has never tried the simple version, Stephanie, you made a post yesterday and you and I were conversing about it. It'd be mm -hmm. like saying, you know what? I've never taken addition, subtraction, or multiplication, but I think I'm ready for pre-cal. And it's like, that's crazy. <laughs> you should definitely start with the simplest version and see how that goes. And it might be perfect, but for the people where it wasn't perfect, then it was like, all right, let's try some lean days and high fat. Some people, total win. I know some people who still enjoy mixing up lean days and high fat days. I did it for several months, worked out. And then some women said, oh my gosh, I don't even want to get out of bed on those lean days. I'm mentally, by the end of day two on lean meats, um, I feel depressed. I'm constipated. I don't like the lean days. And then I have a high fat day and I have diarrhea. And you're like, okay, well, that's not it. That's not it right? So I don't see people who try things. Now, granted, in almost everything new that we try, whether it's a new workout program, you're going to be sore. There's going to oftentimes be some negative firsts. I had to definitely make adjustments um, when I went carnivore, but I didn't say, oh, it's been two weeks and my fingers are still shaking without sugar. I should probably go back to carbs. You know that there's an adjustment period. You're adapting. So it's sometimes what's really hard is to know and it's something only an individual can decide for themselves am i adapting for the sake of something good or am i simply on the wrong path right now and i need to go another direction and that's where nobody can tell you that mm -hmm. you just have to either give it some time or get real quiet within yourself mm -hmm. and reflect pray look at your history and determine is it worth trying? Do I have anything that's worked better? That's a question I ask often. Has anything worked better than this? If so, should you go back to that? But yeah, so then this summer, I was talking to some women who had tried lean carnivore. Some of them had even tried protein sparing modified fasting for real, which I've never actually done. Um, some of them had tried obviously carbs before. They had tried standard carnivore, eat two pounds of meat. And they still were stuck and we're not talking it's been two months it was more like two years two years of struggling and I was like, gosh I'm mighty and some of them said they were trying a high fat version with limited protein and smaller amounts so I took a workshop with Emily Pinton Amy Bellinger I took a course with Dr. Boz um just did some reading listening to a lot of Dr. Elizabeth Bright videos I was like okay I could see how some women could benefit from this not everybody, not everybody, but some women could benefit due to hormone regulation and an inability for their liver to get the signal that we use fat for fuel and it might be worth trying. And some people have had success. Is it perfect for everyone? Of course not. But there's nothing. You'll never find a way where everybody's going to thrive on it. But I think the main point is don't jump from thing to thing so fast that you have no idea. The other thing, so yes, give it some time, but also don't give up. Sometimes people will try one version of carnivore and be like, well, meat's not for me. So then processed food, sugar, we know that's not the answer. I, I think it's a fine line between try everything so, so fast versus don't give up and after trying just one thing. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me as an individual to know how to encourage people. How long has it been? 
How are you feeling? But I know it's hard for individuals also. If they're not getting results, including like, I can't sleep. I don't feel good. I hate my meals. Also, I'm not losing weight. I have no energy. If these are things that are happening, I wouldn't encourage someone to do that for two years. Frankly, that's crazy. <laughs> right. And there's sometimes there's two extremes too. There's the all the meat and kind of moderate or low fat. And then there's a high fat with moderate to low protein. And yes. sometimes it just needs, you need to find a balance somewhere in between. Well, for some people, 70, 30 is like beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, right. but how many people had tried 70, 30 for a really long amount of time. And that just wasn't their spot. But also how many people were doing fine at 70, 30. And then we're like, I don't know, maybe let's do something else. And it's like, mm, you could try. So for example, I, I do really fine on, um, like I said, I even tried a much leaner version and I felt good. I think so much of it has to do with how healthy are you in general? Because let's face it, there are college students up the road from me right now who are thriving, building muscle, kicking butt and taking names, eating Cheetos. They're young. <laughs> They're healthy, they're eating pure garbage and they're not sick right now. And we, we would say, well, just wait for it. But my point is right now, they are muscular, they are looking good. They have energy, they're sleeping because they're young and healthy right now. When people are, I'm not that young, but when they're fairly healthy, I do think you become more metabolically flexible. So I can eat a lean carnivore. I can thrive on 70, 30 and it took some effort, but now I feel really great on high fat, but I, I don't think everyone has so many options, right? So the longer you've been insulin resistant or the more fasting insulin you have, I think sometimes it can take a lot more honing in on what's going to really work. Yeah. And, you know, right. currently, like we can see in the web a lot, lot, all these trends that that we discussed that are really described and you have people advertising for the lean, uh, lean way of carnivore. There was one with the high fat. Some people are advertising uh, about fasting and we have all the knowledge from all the positive effects from all the stuff you can try. Yeah. And sometimes when you're stuck, you don't know what to try, how right. to try. What would be your advice for pe people that are stuck and they are overwhelmed with all this information and all these studies and all these? Yes. So you could study until you're blue in the face. You could listen to an expert every day, listen to 10, and you'll get a different opinion every single time. And that so much noise is really hard for people to even know where to begin. And that's why I think starting simple with something that sounds appealing to you. So like, if you love chicken wings and omelets and steak, why not start with something you at least like to get off of carbs? I feel like getting off of processed foods and carbs, most people make that leap. Like hardly anyone is going to say that's a bad idea. Like, Get off the processed foods and the carbs and the sugars. But after that is when it gets real noisy because you're right. Do we eat three to four times per day or do you eat once every three to four days? Which one is right? And there is literally only one way that each person can know. And it is to just experience something for yourself. And if you hear someone talk about a plan and now some people lean into everything. They're like, oh, that's it. This pill, that pill we have to do or whatever it is. But if you really lean into something and think, oh my gosh, that really makes sense to me. And it also aligns with my past. So for people who hear fasting, 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 but you know yourself and you know that your binge eating began <laughs> with starving yourself, because that's where a lot of people start binging is when they don't eat. Then you look at your history and you go, you know what, that's really not a good idea for me. Now, that doesn't mean it's a bad idea for Jason Fung. He may have never had binging eating disorder, but I did. So I have to look at myself, not look at, hmm, Jason Fung looks healthy. That's not me. He didn't live my life. So part of it is a lot of self-examination. And then some of it is just going to take a little trial and error. So if you were to try doing, let's say, protein sparing modified fasting, because you saw some people who looked very good talking about it. 
And if you try that for a while and you feel awesome, then I would say, cool, that's that's good. I mean, what more do any of us want than for people to say, my gosh, I'm feeling the best I've ever felt. That is great news. Um, but if you try it and it's just not the thing, you may not have to swing all the way one way to the other, but you could say perhaps <laughs> I go to a little higher fat to see how that feels. And if that feels good, but you're still looking for something more, you could increase to see where you lie. But it there's no research study that's going to prove that there's one perfect way just because there isn't. So I think just know yourself and then try something long enough to really get a feel for what parts work. Sometimes people say, you know, the part about this high fat that worked for me was this, but then the three to four meals per day didn't really work. So you can adapt it to yourself and your life. It doesn't have to be rigid, but having a little bit of an open mind can be helpful there too. I just wanted to say, Kelly, that so you and I both work um, under or, or are training under Dr. Iflin in the addiction reset community. Yeah. Um, so, so we're kind of getting real well versed uh, in that addiction kind of uh, area. And that makes me appreciate and love you even more that you are so willing to try with these different communities. Um, you know, even at the expense of switching things all up for you, right? Mm -hmm. that, that you're changing the way of your eating to um, help, help everyone. And, and I just really appreciate that. And I thank you for that. And um, I guess my question would be, now that you've tried this mm -hmm. high fat kind of way, um, what, what have you learned about yourself? Yeah. And maybe some of the uh, trends that you're seeing with your uh, group members? Yeah, great question. Also, I love Dr. Iflin, and I love that you are there too. You are, you're awesome, Amy. Thank you for that. Okay, what I've noticed in myself, I used to really struggle with volume addiction eating, meaning that I did not feel satisfied. You know, these carnivore bars, they're like 400 calories, right? And it's 37 grams of fat, I think. I know because I just ate one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and typically you would think if you just need a little snack or something, that should be very filling this 37 grams of fat because they're small. I used to think, how does anyone eat fewer than five of these at a time? How? Because I could just eat one after the other. I would. And they're like $11 a piece. I could put away $50 worth of carnivore bars. I did in a day. I think I ate eight one time. Wait, are they really $11 a piece? Yes. <laughs> I haven't had one. Sorry. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, and so as a volume eater, it almost did not matter how much fat, how much calories. It just had to take up space in my stomach. And if I got a stretch, like a belly stretch, and it was like a little dopamine hit. Yeah. Okay. Now you're full. Well, this is why sometimes, you know, extreme dieters will eat tons and tons of like cucumbers, right? or lettuce, because they're just trying to take up space. Well, a volume addiction for carnivore, it, it went fine for me, but it was, I never felt quite satiated because I never really learned to feel satisfied with less than about a pound of meat at a time, because that's how I did it for all those years. Two meals, about a pound of burger patties per time. And that was enough to give me that little dopamine hit. <laughs> so then I was like, oh my gosh, many meals per day, with lots of fat and you look at these plates and I'm using like dessert plates or whatever you call them. I don't know, tiny size plates. And it was very frustrating to me. So I had to learn to like slow down and then appreciate being full from the actual nutrition. And I can do it now. I mean, easy. It took a little practice, but I can eat that meal slowly, give it a little time. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm actually like, not stuffed like that level stuffed, completely could not eat another bite. Satisfied, done. And that's new for me. And I have heard some group members say that it has really helped them to learn to eat throughout the day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I know it's like, what a novel concept. <laughs> but people getting back to the idea of breakfast, lunch, and dinner instead of one huge meal 
And some people say it has actually helped them with some of those binge tendencies to just know I'm going to have three meals today. Whereas some others have said thinking about food three times per day triggers them to now obsess about food. So that's what you said. What have I learned from other people? That didn't happen to me. I feel like, wow, breakfast, lunch, and dinner again. Nice. And then um, I don't, I wouldn't say a large number of people, but, but some have said, I really got used to eating once per day. I don't like eating three times per day. So that goes back to just knowing yourself. Um, I had had a very minor issue on standard carnivore that had gotten worse, but was still not bad. And it was a very dull ache in my lower back. I had not had my kidneys checked out. I was very scared actually to even have it looked into. I'd messaged Danny Conway. She's like, let's do it. Let's do some um, urinalysis, lab work, you know, whatever, all the things. I said, I'm really not ready yet, but it had been going on for a while. I switched to high fat and that completely went away for me. So I'm so thankful for that. I had also dealt with some breast tenderness. Mammograms were clear. My doctor says, it was like, everything looks perfect. Okay, so I started taking um, about two drops of Lugol's iodine per day because Dr. Barry said that one of the number one reasons for breast tenderness is iodine deficiency. So I said, I will give it a shot. Breast tenderness went away just like that. And I did it, so I kept that up for 18 months. And if I missed even a day of iodine, when my kids hugged me, they're like, right there. I could feel it when they hugged me. I was like, oh, that's a little bit sore. High fat, I have not taken iodine at all. And it is completely gone. So there are some things hormone-wise that it's like, it might be worth people trying something if they're having something they just can't fix on their current diet. Um, those have been my only two real, I didn't have any other complaints. That was it for me. My sleep was already good. I had already lost weight. There was nothing more I was looking for except maybe to experience something. I thought, how am I going to teach high fat carnivore? I've never even tried it. I'd... That's not exactly true though. When I first started carnivore, they only talked about fatty meats. It was all about fatty meats. And if you're craving fat, eat it. Well, in my very first six months, I was craving fat. So I did eat a lot. Nobody was saying 80-20. Nobody was saying check your ketones or glucose. It was just fatty meat. And that's what we mostly did. But that had been 13 years. <laughs> and I was going through other adaptations with just starting carnivore. So I decided to try it again. And I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to do this forever. Does anyone know if they're going to do anything specific forever? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm never going to go back to a high carb diet. I cannot even fathom that. There are mm -hmm. some things that I feel confident in saying. Yeah. Um, but as far as am I always going to eat a large amount of fat? I don't know. Right now I have no reason to stop. I'm enjoying my meals. It's different. I feel satisfied. I got rid of two minor issues and I didn't, well, I started to say I didn't develop any new ones. I did for a little bit. I had upset stomach pretty badly for two to three weeks um, on high fat and that has now resolved and my sleep was not great for a while and now my sleep is really good, but you know, it took a little powering through and there were times where I thought this is so dumb. James is like, why are you doing this? Because they say it's good for your hormones. <laughs> <laughs> I want to find out if it's actually going to do something good. He's like, were your hormones bad before? I, like, I don't think they were bad. I think they're fine. But I I've wanted to just power through to find out what's on the other side of this. And now I'm at a good place. I hear Can y'all hear my dog barking? Okay, nope. good. Forget I said anything then. <laughs> it's loud on my end. Can I ask you something about your improvements? Yeah. Uh, you say that you stopped taking iodines and yes. you don't need it anymore. But when I'm looking at your meals currently, and I look at your meals before, before doing these high fat experiments, you were mostly eating burger patties. Mm -hmm. Now eating this high fat experiment, you're eating uh, oysters, you're having lots of different kinds of food. You introduce like goat cheese, you introduce yeah. other kinds of food. 
don't you see that the iodine you're taking from the oysters and you're bringing to your diet other uh, nutrients that may be responsible of these improvements? That's a really good observation. I've had four small cans of oysters, three and a half ounces a piece, four. <laughs> so that would explain, and I did it all in like, so for a while it was like oysters, oysters, oysters. I just love them. And then after a while, it's not because, well, the next trend is because I literally just got sick of oysters. You know, you have them for a few days and then it was like, okay, well, moving on. I'm now mostly having um, that carnivore bark that is made with ground beef in fat tallow butter and fat trimmings small steaks pork belly so much pork belly um so yeah i would say for that week or two and you know what you, you may be right if give it another month and it might be like oh my gosh i need more oysters <laughs> but i don't think oysters are actually high in iodine not as i uh sardines are though and i have not had any sardines since starting this not one can. Oh, so you're not doing the sardines fast. Good gosh, no. No, they can make that a fad all they want to. I can eat a can of sardines. I need a little mustard with them. Um, I can even eat them now bone in, but I haven't had a single can since I started high fat. And that's not to say I won't. I have a few cans in my, my pantry right now. They're okay. They're okay. I mostly was eating them because omega-3s and iodine but i would never go wow i'm just dying for some bony tiny fish today <laughs> i would advise you some salmon roe and butter it's much better than sardines i have had salmon roe um that was probably been a couple years ago i was going to whole foods getting the bright orange beautiful salmon roe that was okay i didn't love 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 it but with a little sour cream it was fine the, the little burst of fishy taste <laughs> it's okay I didn't hate it I don't hate sardines but I just don't ever think I'm going to sit down and think man I would love the taste of fishiness to explode today in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> that sounds appetizing right but I do know a lot of people love it and I know like as far as vitamin c and nutrients so many great did I say c it's d though isn't it no which one claire is vitamin d D. Okay, I got it right. And omega three, omega three, and DHA, and so many Such things. Super, you know, yeah, super food. Yeah, and and I can do it. It's also beautiful in Instagram photos. So yeah, that. yeah, you put orange on your picture on your plate, and it looks so <laughs> great. You know, it's it's very hard to argue with that, which was the main reason I kept driving to Whole Foods and paying twelve dollars for a jar the size of my nose. It's like, man, that looks good on an Instagram photo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kelly, can I ask you? I know you've talked about heavy cream before. Yeah. Um, and and that you really love it. Do you day to day, no matter well, maybe in the different ways that you've eaten, did one way um cause you to have cravings more than another? Do you ever have cravings? cravings for heavy cream or cravings for carbohydrates and sugars because heavy cream yes <laughs> yes um I mean do you ever go to a birthday party and they're eating all this stuff and you're like oh today I could really have some of that I almost want to say yes because it sounds so much more relatable but I have to be honest I really don't anymore I literally don't if I were to get birthday cake that sweet icing close to my face at one point, there would have been no way I could have kept from eating it. But at this point, oh my gosh. I mean, I can smell it even from a distance. I do yeah. not feel drawn to it. It's almost repulsive. So mm. no, I don't have cravings for sweets like that. I'm not even, the hardest craving I ever broke was, other than heavy cream, <laughs> was peanut butter. That was like, mm, that That's was the worst. worst so hard to give up and mm. I know that is really common I couldn't have it in my house for years but now I buy the kind that is just peanuts peanuts and salt for my kids I know peanut butter is not the greatest food but also we could do worse um and they are not me so I let them have some peanut butter it doesn't even trigger me now I see it in the fridge and it's fine there's nothing now that makes me think gosh I just wish I could have that 
I really can't think of anything. No. How cool is that, though? Isn't it's that so awesome? Cool. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> and if anybody thinks, wow, she has such willpower. No, that's the point. I have no willpower. And that's why I was, I was, uh, I didn't have much knowledge and I had no willpower. So yes, I was very overweight because I was avoiding all the wrong foods and I, I couldn't stop eating the ones that were actually the problem. So now it's not that I have willpower. It takes no willpower to avoid cake when it smells disgusting. That's easy. Yeah. So it, it's a real gift to not have to need willpower anymore. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would have another question about your way of eating. So you you say to us that you can eat high fat carnivore, you can eat low leaner days, you can eat six, eat six to eight burger patties in a day. And are you thinking that in the future you will have like flexibility between all this way of eating like for a couple of days because it's easy just go with burger patties for yeah four days I'm, because it's easy and then go back to high fat for a couple of days and then switch from yes one stop to another i've done that i already know i can um so i did about 10 years of mostly burger patties i'm not gonna like if i went out to eat of course i ordered a pork chop or something it wasn't like i will eat nothing but a burger patty. that's just basically what i did though i took i was a teacher so i was taking four per day and then i'd have four waiting for me in the fridge at home after that was when i really started coming to like posting photos on instagram and over the past two years two to three years if you look back it's steak sometimes chicken bars deli meat roll-ups I mean it was I ate pretty much anything oh egg puddings uh, scrambled eggs omelets chicken wings all of the carnival foods and that was fantastic I I love that yes that's where I think wouldn't all of us love to end up there where we can just eat anything that sounds good that day and yeah I did totally fine with that I didn't gain weight I didn't feel triggered. I didn't lose sleep over it. My skin was fine. Everything was fine. Um, and I did that just until um, I tried the leaner version. Oh gosh, I lose track of time, but it's probably been 15 months ago when I tried leaner just because well, let's see what this does. And it was, like I say, it was fine. It was far less tasty, but I like those chicken meat bars. If y'all have ever tried chicken, ground chicken meat bars, I know it sounds like the worst thing ever, but with some slap your mama, I was enjoying them. I was never at any point lying about saying, I love these chicken meat bars. They were good. And then, I, you know, several months of that, you sort of like, mm. <laughs> let's move on. So then I was still having some burger patties here or there. And I was sort of back to doing my own anything I wanted to version until July three months ago and that's when I started high fat so I've definitely had some periods of I'm not really doing anything specific just carnivore and I probably will end up there because I mean why not and the two reasons why not is why not because I just like ache in my back that's why I'm not sure that I'll go back otherwise I would say yes I'm going to do this for six months and go back but like mm, I really don't want that feeling back and I didn't really love having to take iodine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but wouldn't it be cool if I didn't need that? So I'm not sure what I'll do, but Claire, I know I can. I know I can, it's fine. <laughs> well, and it's this metabolic flexibility that we're all looking for, that we can go, you know, today I'm, I, it was easy for me to eat lots of fat tomorrow, maybe it's not, but yeah. still mm -hmm. I feel good and like, that's the bottom line we're all looking for, right? That we can kind of switch, be a little bit fluid with it and, and still see good numbers, still see a good, um, you know, blood sugar in the morning, uh, even though we had a little more protein yesterday. And, but the point is that it takes time, right? It, it yes. takes, it takes time for you to yeah. heal. And it's, it's really, it's really enjoyable to adapt to day-to-day -day life. For me, you know, like uh, sometimes it's so enjoyable to have three meals a day just to be able to share three meals with others. It's mm -hmm. really good. And sometimes I'm such busy and I, I don't have time for three meals a day. Right. And it, it, it's so, so much easier to have only two 
and yeah it's just being able to adapt and sometimes having a small plate is okay because it can be quick you don't have time you eat your high fat stuff and blah two minutes it's over you have done your meal you're done you can move on and sometimes you just want to sit in front of your plate see the big stuff looking at you and spend one hour and a half eating your 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 yes. meat like enjoying each bite and oh, taking the time to do it oh, that's lovely yes Oh, you described that beautifully. I just want to go get a big plate of meat right now. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I agree, Claire. And I do think that the healthier people become, then the more flexible they can also be with meal timing, with macros, with which kinds of meats. You know, when people are really sick, some of them say they literally can feel it if they don't eat grass-finished beef. I'm like, what? Really? And I remember Re Rebecca Farmer was one of the first people who was really vocal about it. She said, yes. And, you know, she was hospitalized so many times with so many disorders. She said, yes, I feel ill if I eat gr grain finished meat. Huh. Now, I had all these years said, eat the meat that you can afford. True. But that makes you feel best. So that still applies. If she knows she feels better with it, for heaven's sakes. I would never say, but you're wrong. It must, it doesn't have to be that. For her, apparently it does. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that's still true for her. She's, you know, much further in than when I heard her say that. She may now be more flexible. Flexible. Michaela Peterson used to have to be so strict. No seasonings except for salt. Now I know, last I heard, she can eat chicken and some pepper, you know. So I think the more healthy a person becomes, then the more they can do more things that they love, right? And eat more foods that they actually enjoy and eat at the times they want and eat more or less protein. And I think anybody who says, why do we have to make this complicated has probably never been really sick with something that was hard to figure out. And when somebody is sick and they do have something that's tricky, it might need to look complicated for a while, but that doesn't mean everybody needs to go quick, let's complicate everything. If you don't need it to be hard, and nothing is bothering you, then great. Um, I did hear Danny Conway was making a point about how everybody doesn't need to try everything, try everything. But she did say, if you are even like, like there is something like breast tenderness and you think, you know, maybe it would help. She says, there's nothing wrong with trying something to see if it could be better. But if it's like a week on this, a week on that, let's try you know, we're just shooting darts in the dark, basically, and, and never really finding what really works. And that's when it starts to look like following trends instead of really trying to get healthy. But, you know, I don't judge people for wanting to try something new. If they don't feel good, please try something new. Please try something new if you don't feel good. <laughs> I think that's a very important thing because it's really possible you know, I tried so many diets before carnivore and people in my life could have said, and they probably did behind my back. <laughs> um, she tried cutting out meat one time. She tried running for a long time. She tried doing low calorie and low fat. And now she's going to eat only meat. Well, yeah. And eventually I struck gold on that and it really hit home. But if somebody had said she'll try any fad, I tried one time eating only yogurt for weeks. I tried eating only pickles. I tried so many things that were awful for me and I felt it immediately. So yeah, I jumped thing to thing until something actually felt like good. So for people who feel kind of accused of this whole jumping thing, sometimes that's what it takes. Mm -hmm also just give it a minute give before a you minute. before you move on to the next thing yeah. if you're suffering and, and you're not feeling good then by all means try something else but yeah yeah there was a six month period when I went um really all in carnivore when I did gain weight slowly but for six months and even though some people would say oh my gosh six months why did you stick with it? Because something good was happening. I could feel it. Something good. So if everybody is placing all hope on the scale, that 
is not the best indicator that something good is happening. But if you feel it, like I can feel it in my heart, something good. I'm feeling a little better in the morning. I'm a little happier. Something good is happening. And, you know, that can inspire people that sometimes stick with something more than the minute. But if you're only looking at a scale, I think that's when all the flip-flopping starts. You go, oh my gosh, I did this for four days. And people will message and say, the scale has gone up two pounds. I kid you not, this one lady said two pounds and quote, my husband commented that he can see it. I was like, we have bigger problems than that two pounds. First of all, if my husband never commented that I gained 20, let alone two pounds, now there's a bigger issue. But she she was upset and, and said, I don't think I can do this anymore. Okay. It's two pounds. Do you feel anything better? And I don't know. I don't think she stuck around long enough to really talk. That's all she, but that's what happens when we become focused on one thing and not just how I feel and not life itself. It's like, if that scale went up, then it can't be right. That's that mentality. And if it went down, then some people will ignore all else. Yep, I feel bad. And now I can't sleep and this and this and this, but the scale went down. Like, But a lot of other things went down with it. <laughs> that's, that's not good. So yeah, I think that's sometimes where the quick flip, flip, flip is, is because it's just that morning number. Mm. Yeah. And listening to our body, I know it helped me so much, you know, when I started this high fat carnivore diet, I was fearing the fat as crazy. And each time I was eating butter, I was like, oh, you're eating butter, you're eating so much fat. And I was scared and scared as crazy. And I wanted to restrict And At the same time, I had this feeling on my body saying, you're doing great. Yes. And I, my brain was asking me, okay, just go ahead with a little bit more butter and just look how you feel. And I was feeling so much better. And just listening to this body happiness instead of yes. mind fears, it was amazing. Really I amazing. like that. Yeah, listening to your body's happiness. That's another reason I kept going for that six months. Yeah, I not just saw some things getting better, but I literally just had body happiness. And then my period came back. That was part of the reason I started all in carnivore in the first place was I just wanted a baby so bad. I mean, I was praying every day. I want a baby so bad, but I didn't even have a period. So then when that came back, like, yes, confirmation, body happiness. That's so good. Um, and, and the scale did come back down. I didn't have to keep those 23 pounds, but that's all anybody typically asks is, oh, but did you lose that 23 pounds? Good heavens. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And also I had three babies. If anyone cares, <laughs> like, it's not all about that number. Right. Right. And I think it makes such a huge difference knowing science wise, like we do, that this is what we're supposed to be eating. Yeah. This, this was put here for us to eat. You know, I mean, I, I have such a thing with, with the processed foods because I'm, I'm, you know, in classes all the time talking about this, but um, if people just knew that this is not this isn't real. This is not real food. This is not what your spot, your body's supposed to be, to be having. And when you take those things away, I mean, the first thing I felt was just my mental health just turned around. I mean, within a week, I was like, oh my God, how could this not be the right thing for me to be eating? You know, because I was homicidal and now I'm happy. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so I, I think you know, a little research and a little um, looking into all of it really, I mean, that settles your mind too, that I know now that this is what I'm supposed to be eating. It's, it's the truth, you know? Yes. And that's all I think all of us want for everybody is to just finally find a way of eating where they just feel mentally happy. And yes, I would love for everybody to also get the physical results that they want to. And I understand I'm not here to say, you know, it's fine to carry around an extra 100 pounds. You should just be happy with that. I don't feel that way. I, I wouldn't have felt that way, certainly when I had the extra 100 pounds. And I don't feel that way now. Um, I just think if you're only basing results on that one number, it can lead to a lot of quick changes and paths. But 
yeah, we just want everybody to feel that level of happiness and satisfaction and to just feel good about what they're eating in whatever way they get there. Honestly, if somebody told me their macros were 99 to 1, any macro, fat, protein, protein, fat, I don't care. You feel great, really? Your sleep is amazing, that's wonderful. You have a menstrual cycle that's regular, your skin is good, you feel happy in the morning. Sounds like it's working to me. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm on some 80-20 commission board. I, <laughs> I just literally want people to feel really good with what they're doing. And my mm -hmm. husband feels pretty good most of the time eating carbohydrates. It is not what I would choose for him, but he wakes up happy. He has energy. We hike. He's a happy, good, calm dad. You know, as long as he's feeling great, he's got back pain. And I keep telling him <laughs> when you're ready to get rid of that back pain, maybe cut out some carbs. But, you know, I think being willing to just let people feel great in their own way is something I've, I certainly value. I just want to say that I read, I saw your story about the man. I think he's in one of your groups that told you that he's reversed type two diabetes yes. very quickly. I just want someone to say that to me. I want to help someone so badly and have them mm -hmm. come back yeah. and say, look what I've done. And, yeah. and just yeah. feel like what that must feel like to you to hear people tell you these things that they've reversed and, and you know, what, that's just the most inspiring thing to me. I started crying when I saw that on your story today, that he reversed his type two diabetes. Like what could be better than that? Okay. In my book, the only thing that could be better that, than that is if somebody were to say to me, I, I got saved, I became a Christian because of you. That is it, literally the only thing that can top this is somebody saying, physically saying you really helped. Um, and I read these messages when you say, what does that feel like? It feels so exciting that I read them at the dinner table to my family. When people message me and say, I had a woman yesterday that said, I literally would spend most days in bed and now I can hike two miles. Thank you so much. It's like, what? That is the coolest thing ever. And yeah, I read them. My family has to listen, but they, they get excited with me. I say they have to, but they also think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And so I try to say, you know, like, yay, meat, praise God. I don't, this is obviously, and also good job, you person that did it, because that's not easy to do. I could sit here all day and say, eat meat, cut out carbs, but this person had to put in some effort and work and consistency and then that cow gave its life for this <laughs> and then the lord heals and all of it together like yes this person is hiking and that's really cool yeah i just want to say something about what you said kelly i i'm so grateful to you because every single day i don't have time to read any bible verse Mm -hmm. And because of you, every single day, even if I'm not going to Instagram, I'm just going to check your story and to Aww. read a little bit of Bible. And I'm so grateful because it came into my day-to-day -day life because of you. Oh, that's so nice. Well, part of what I'll tell you, I was inspired by somebody at a meetup also in July. That New Jersey meetup was really very life-changing. <laughs> So thank you, Dr. Lisa, for hosting an amazing meetup. But there was a woman who spoke. She was the last person to give her carnivore testimony. We were all coming up and sharing our stories. Um, and it was just people in attendance. It wasn't like me and Dr. Lisa. It was the people there were sharing. And it was incredible. Like, oh, my gosh, this is so amazing. And then this one woman came up. She said, I also have had my life changed by eating meat. But I just want to say that. It's also important for us to remember that this life is temporary and that it's also important to be prepared for the life to come. And I think, you know, it, it would be, she said, I can't leave here today without saying something about that. And I thought, man, that was so brave and powerful for her to say that. And then I thought, it's also so true. We have a spiritual life and we also have 
our physical life and if we spend all day like especially obsessing if we're just obsessing about physical physical and we ignore relationships and we ignore our creator and we ignore our soul and we don't even think about what happens to us after this after we die because we will because we will i sometimes wonder is the obsession over health just in hopes that we're never gonna die sorry i'm definitely gonna die um, I hope it's at a long old age and with my mind and body intact. I really do. But when I die, I also hope I'm ready for that. So she inspired me that day. And, and there was something within me that felt nervous to share because it's a carnivore page. And I thought people are here to learn about health. And that's true. So I try not to be really pushy about it. But also, like, it matters to me. I share pictures of my kids. It's not like a kid page. I share pictures of my dog. It's not a canine page. It's part of my life. And I thought, if I feel scared to share a part of my life, that's sad. And I should expect that people can handle that. That's just part of me. Take it or leave it. They don't have to read it if they don't want to. They can just show up for the steak. But I appreciate you saying that, Claire, because I've enjoyed posting it. It's been good for my soul, too. I'm enjoying reading it every single day. Thanks, yeah. Claire. Y'all are awesome. I think all three of you, I follow all three of you on Instagram. I've known you all in Zoom meetings. I have watched your videos. You're all three doing a fantastic job educating people and sharing um, a really balanced approach, a very not dogmatic, balanced approach to what you have seen work for yourselves and what you see work for other people and in the community. and. I really appreciate that. You're you're really doing wonderful things. So thank you. Not that you need my stupid approval. I'm just telling you, good job and thank you. <laughs> no, that means so yeah. much to us. I mean, we really try to model ourselves after you because you do the same thing. So, you know, thank you so much for being here with us today. And thank you for reaching so many people, including all of us, and putting them on the path to healing. You do a great job providing information and cheering everybody on. And I think we all just feel like you are our carnivore best friend, our, our carnivore oh, sister, and, you know, yeah. the best that anybody could ask for. So we truly appreciate that. Thank you. I do. I do feel like we are all sisters in multiple ways, you three. So, and anybody out there watching, I, I do feel a very kindred spirit with people who say that their life was changed by in a similar way, right? In a similar way. That's a bonding moment right there. When somebody says, my gosh, my life was changed in a similar way to yours. Um, that's a really cool feeling. So, yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.